In this video, I'm going to show you how to use heavy gauge sterling silver wire with an impression die to make this beautiful crescent shape. So this is the original hub. It's a beautiful floral design crescent. And I also have here the impression die that I'm going to use. And I have eight gauge sterling silver wire. This is very heavy gauge wire. And the reason I'm going to use this is because I want to press this crescent solid rather than trying to use sheet to force into that shape and, you know, end up with a hollow pressing. So I'm just going to shape this wire into the shape of the crescent as closely as I can. And I don't have to worry a huge amount about leaving tool marks with the plier or anything like that. Um, because the wire is going to be pressed down into the impression die and the tool marks won't really show as long as they're not terrible. Um, and because this wire is so heavy, I can't do a ton of forming with the pliers. I have to use the nylon mallet to kind of help me along. But you can see how I'm just having it conform to the shape of the impression die. And when you're choosing material to use an impression die, you want to make sure that it's at least as thick as the die is deep. You always need excess metal. So I'm pretty close here. I'm going to go ahead and mark where I want to cut it. Um, and then cut it with my jeweler saw to make this last end a little bit easier to bend into that tighter radius for the crescent. So now I have this smaller piece to work with and I'm just going to tap it down a little bit more so that it can fit into that crescent shape. And that's close enough. And um, honestly, this material is a little thicker than I needed for this die, but I always like to give myself plenty of excess so that I can get a nice solid stamping. Now I'm ready to press. I'm gonna put the tool steel pusher on the top of my press. This one that I'm using here is an older version of our tool steel pusher. They are currently shorter than this. They work the same. And then I'm just going to use the steel pusher to press my metal into the die. You don't need to use any urethane or anything else. Um, and so I'm just rotating, pressing, rotating again, pressing working my way around to make sure that that metal presses into the die evenly. And it looks like my metal shifted a little bit, um, and so it didn't catch the top of one of those crescent, you know, the top area on one side of the crescent, but that's okay for this example. But that would be something to keep an eye on. Okay, so you can see how it pressed down into the impression die and it looks pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and trim the sides up to remove some of that excess metal because it's still pretty thick. And then I'll press it one more time. So I'm just gonna saw off some of the excess. I'm not at this point worried about getting, you know, right up against the impression. Um, I'm just gonna kind of remove some of that material so that more of the silver can be forced down into the impression itself. So just cutting off these areas where there's a lot of excess silver to kind of focus the, the pressure when the press is pushing onto the metal that um, is being forced down into the die and not on the edges. So we'll get this all removed and then we'll go press it again. And I haven't annealed this wire at all. I didn't anneal it before bending. I didn't anneal it after bending. Um, you could, but I, it wasn't necessary for this. 
Okay, so you can see how I've trimmed off a lot of the excess, and now we'll go back to the press and press it again. See, that's that area where I didn't quite fill, but for this example, it's okay. All right, so I'm gonna put it in and push with the pusher again. Slowly rotate, put it back in and press again. And just continue doing that several times to make sure that I've got even pressure all the way around in the impression. So still just rotating it and continuing to press several times to make sure that the die, you know, the metal goes into the die evenly and er er every area of the metal receives equal pressure. And remember, you're centering everything, but you're centering what's being pushed. So you can see I still have some thickness above the impression, which is good. I want this to be a nice solid pressing. I'm just going to even it up a little bit more. And then we'll take a look at it. So here you can see it after pressing, it looks fantastic. My last step is to just saw and file and remove all that excess material and I'm left with this beautiful impression.